All right, hello and welcome to the Expert Inside Interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by Sterling Hawkins, who is in Los Angeles, correct? That's right. Hey, yeah. John, great to be with you. Yeah, and in a very sunny Los Angeles, and I'm down here in a sunny San Diego, <laughs> so it's all good, sun everywhere. And uh, Sterling's a global keynote speaker. He delivers strategies on breakthrough performance, and he talks a lot about the innovation gap. So what we wanted to talk to about today is innovation culture. So, um, Sterling, how do, how do you go about creating, number one, creating an innovation culture, and how do you recognize that there is an innovation culture happening? Yeah. Well, typically where businesses start is in a very linear trajectory. Mm -hmm. You know, I think about it as looking in the rearview mirror of, oh, what did we do last week, last month, last year, and projecting out into the future a slightly better version of that, right? We're going to do 5% better this year. We're going to be 10% more efficient. And it's the same in every business. And it's not that that's bad. We have to do that, you know, as humans and as businesses. But it's not the only place to look. Right. Because at the same time, exponential growth is all around us. Mm -hmm. You know, you see it online with things going viral. Uh, you see it in the populations of uh, underdeveloped countries. You see it in a lot of startups. And so the question is, you, you know, you take that linear trajectory that most of us are on and the exponential growth that's actually possible for every one of us. Well, there's a gap between those two things. And that's the innovation gap you're talking about, right? Right. And so, I mean, to your point there, so we tend to be very incrementalist, right? If that is yeah. that is actually such a word. If it's not, it should be. Uh, and and so we're very and and so as you say, we're very careful. We say here we are. Let's try and move a few steps forward. So how do you right. how do you break out of that? Because that's a that's a a scary thing for a lot of people to do. To say okay, let's this year we're not going to be incremental. We're going to be exponential. Yeah, yeah. I would say it's almost necessarily scary. Mm -hmm. Right. Because if it wasn't scary, if there wasn't something limiting you, well, you'd probably be doing it already. <laughs> right. You know, and so that's a great litmus test to understand is something actually pushing the boundaries of what's possible here or not, because you'll feel it. You know, you'll feel uncomfortable. You get angry. You certainly have some kinds of emotions about it. And what I always look for inside of teams and businesses in general, but especially teams that spend a lot of time together. Mm -hmm is what can they do that's going to break some of those cognitive models of the past? Right. You know, our, our brains are really built to memorize and repeat patterns. Mm -hmm. So it, it could be anything. It could be the team goes out for um, some kind of activity. The more strenuous, the better. Right. right? It, it could be that the team um, presents some new ideas to their uh, bosses. It's, it's got to be something that collectively they come together and create right. that pushes them outside of their comfort zone a little bit. And it's inside of that discomfort that growth can happen. Yeah, because that's an, it's an interesting point you raise because, you, um, you know, you say people aren't built for change, right? I think that's one of, the, yeah. one of your quotes. And I 100% and I agree with you. It's like people, people really try and avoid change, even though change is happening constantly in their lives, right? You know, we have so little yeah. control over a lot of things, but yet we try to resist it. So is what yeah. you're saying that when you can bring people together and they can sort of help each other confront change together as a, as a group or a project, that that actually helps the process? Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's no question about it. And supporting each other as human beings, you know, with feelings. You take, um, I don't know, take like Kodak, for example. Mm -hmm. the first to invent the digital camera, yeah. but they hung their hat on print photography. Why? Well, because organizationally, they didn't have a culture that was able to embrace the discomfort necessary to bring that to market, mm -hmm. right? Un until it, it was too late. Right. Same idea. As we can look at those things within our teams and start to cultivate individual leadership to support people going out on a limb and being okay with failing, it's in that world that people have access to, you know, exponential growth and transforming their companies. Uh, and part of it, and I know, as you say, is that you have to you have to let go of your of what you think you already know or what you have done in the past. And let's face it, we're very good at confusing 
opinion with fact, right? Yeah, and, yeah very good. <laughs> and and so and so part of this is that you have to let go of your of your thinking or your ideas around the way things have always worked, the way things should work, and sort of open yourself to to new ideas. That's right. Yeah, I mean, there's four quadrants of human learning, mm -hmm. and we tend to operate in the world of what we know, mm -hmm. the things that we know that we know and the things that we know that we don't know. And well, we use the things that we know, great. That's why we have what we have. And we can learn the things that we don't know, but that's only where incremental growth lives. Mm -hmm. It's on the other side of the quadrant, the things that we don't know that we know and things that we don't know that we don't know, mm -hmm. right? This, this is like the world of unlimited chaos of everything mm -hmm. that's around us that we just don't see. Right. Right. Or we're not aware of or we never had exposure to. And it's on that side of the equation that's really more around human experience, almost having an epiphany of, wow, we could do that, mm -hmm. that real growth lives. And it, it's all built inside of our knowledge for sure. Yeah. And obviously, then you need to have the leadership that is willing to embrace that or facilitate that. And let's face it, when you go down a yeah. path like this, there's there's going to be some rocky or rough times maybe at the beginning maybe as you get into it you have to have a lot yeah. of you have to have a lot of um kind of confidence and bravery to kind of see it through rather than just to say okay that was a really bad idea let's just jump yeah yeah totally over time mm -hmm. because I, i'm sure you've seen that graph of like where you are today and then where you are in the future and in between there's this big squiggly line mm -hmm. Yeah, it, there's some good days on that squiggly line, like, oh, yeah, this was definitely the great idea. I'm so glad we did this. And there's the really bad days, like, what am I doing? I'm totally unqualified. This is never going to work, yeah. right? But it's staying committed to the vision and where you're headed. And it doesn't matter where you are inside of a company, right? right. I think leadership oftentimes gets confused with titles. Sure. And it's not the same thing. It doesn't really matter what side of your business card. It's who are you? Can you provide leadership in terms of where you're going and what you're committed to, to everybody that's around you? You know, peers, senior people, people that, and so on. Yeah, because let's face it, I mean, breakout thinking can come from anywhere because, I mean, if yeah. you just look at things organizationally, then you don't get the right picture because sometimes it's, Maybe it's somebody who's in a customer support role who actually has far more insight about the end user than anybody in an executive role will ever have, right? So being able to, yeah. har it's like being able to harness the tribal knowledge of your organization, right? Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. And I think there's a lot of power in, in people speaking. Mm -hmm. You know, oftentimes I can get a lot from working with clients just sitting in on one of their meetings, not doing anything, not sure. related to me, but just listening to how they interact. Because almost inevitably, there's a couple people there that don't talk mm -hmm. or don't talk much. And when you stop the meeting and you actually listen to them, they have some really enlightened things to say, you know, but maybe they don't have the personality or they're a little bit nervous or whatever it is. So they don't contribute. And it's listening to what some of those other people have to say and kind of understanding their perspective. And as we can understand those perspectives, there's answers there, mm -hmm. right? So, there's answers to all the problems we're dealing with. Yeah. So how, when, when you work with organizations, how do you help them unlock the wisdom of all of the talent that they have there? Because as you say, I mean, we're all traditionally, everybody is set up in that same way. It's like, oh, let's have a meeting and everybody gets around the table. And sure, some yeah. people will, some people dominate it. Some people don't say anything and some people just, you know, fall in behind what's ever going on. So how do you help yeah. organizations change that approach so they can really unlock the ideas of everyone? Yeah. Uh, I think what you said, unlock, is exactly the right term, first of all. I, I think every one of us has innate leadership capabilities. So what my job is, is to really get out of the way what's in the way right. of their leadership at any level. Could be the CEO, could be somebody that was just hired um, to work at the company. It doesn't matter. What I've found is one of the more effective ways to do that is looking for scenarios on an individual level and team level to embrace discomfort. Mm -hmm. 
I I used to love um, watching MacGyver when I was a kid. <laughs> if you remember that show, sure. yeah, 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 yeah. And every single Sunday night, nine p.m., I'd be on the couch, just couldn't wait for what was going to happen because he'd be in a life and death scenario mm-hmm. where he either innovates or he dies. Yeah, and he never died. Mm-hmm. As we can find situations like that in our lives and in our business where we kind of trap ourselves, right? It's not a life and death scenario, but it might feel like that oftentimes. Right, sure. You know, for people that are scared to speak, it's committing to be on stage. Mm-hmm. Uh, for people that are worried about, this is the downside of being outside. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> for, for people that are worried about sharing their ideas, committing to sharing an idea or launching a new product or whatever it is, and then having some group accountability for that. Mm-hmm. And it's going through that experience. I would call it like the eye of the needle. Going mm-hmm. through a MacGyver-like situation. Mm-hmm. We actually are very good innovators ourselves. Mm-hmm. And we come up with ways to solve these maybe seemingly complex problems very quickly. Yeah, And maybe the challenge, as you said, I mean, the challenge for somebody to speak up at a meeting who doesn't normally speak up, maybe the challenge for someone else is to not speak and not speak as much at a meeting and actually let other people have ideas. But I like that idea of of finding some way to push yourself out of your comfort zone, to challenge yourself. That way, everybody is feeling, I guess, a little vulnerable in some ways, but there's it's a more open environment then. Yeah. Yeah, the best programs we've run, and you know, we've run programs for some of the biggest companies in the world, mm-hmm. um, all over the world, is when there's an experiential element. Mm-hmm. When we can take people to do a physical activity that kind of pushes the boundaries of the team, yeah. could be skydiving, shark diving, car racing, you know, whatever it is, stuff that gets people out of kind of the monotony mm-hmm. and the cognitive models that that we live inside. Mm-hmm. It provides entree to entirely new kinds of thinking. Yes. And when we have workshops around that or conversations around it, and anybody can do it, right? Like take the team to go skydiving or um, anything that's a little bit outside the comfort zone of the group and then have some brainstorming and strategy immediately thereafter. I Man. guarantee you different things are going to show up. No, absolutely, and I think that's a I think that's a great uh, that's a great concept because I also think let's face it the barriers are probably getting more and more because we have all these devices and digital ways we can hide behind digital uh, digital screens and kind of close ourselves off even more that it's mm. even more important to try and draw out the people uh, the real human people right yeah. I mean, last I checked, we weren't building our companies for some version of the Terminator, right? Mm, yeah, yeah. Our businesses exist to make human lives better mm-hmm. and hopefully make all of our employees and our team's lives better in the process. And as we kind of reorient ourselves there, I think everybody starts there, but sometimes we get lost in the products and the technologies sure. and the services and the tools and the goals and you know all of that stuff. It's easy to lose sight of, oh, yeah, it's the people that matter here. Mm-hmm. And when we can support the people in what they're up to in their lives and in their careers, you get dramatically better results. Yeah, absolutely. All right. In the last few moments we have here, Sterling, I'd just like to give you a chance to tell everybody a little bit more about yourself, what you do, and how they can find out more about you. Yeah, for sure. The best place to find me is sterlinghawkins.com, and I'm on all the kind of expected social media. What I do is I keynote speak, run workshops, and have a coaching business around high performance within mostly big companies. Mm -hmm. And you just did a TEDx talk, is that right, recently? I did. It was my very first one. It was in Chula Vista, which is right outside uh, your neck of the world. Yeah, not not too far away. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Well, look forward to seeing that. Well, listen, Sterling, this has been great. Uh, SterlingHawkins.com. I uh, really encourage everyone to go check it out. And thank you for joining us on this beautiful Los Angeles day. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you off for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Thanks, John.